What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and anyone who has watched my channel for a while knows that I love projectors and I recommend them to people all the time. Well, believe it or not, even with the advancements in projector technology, I still don't actually think projectors work for everyone. So today I'm gonna give you the top five reasons not to buy a projector. Today's video is sponsored by Anchor Work. So for the past year or so, I've been pulling out my laptop whenever I needed to attend a video conference, and as nice as my laptop is, its webcam is pretty awful. Well, in comes the AnchorWork B600, which is basically a broadcast studio in the body of a webcam. It has a high quality 2K camera, which produces a fantastic image in pretty much any lighting situation. It has a built-in LED light, which helps you get great video quality even in a dark room. It has a four microphone array, which uses AnchorWork's voice radar technology to cancel allow background noise and focus on your voice and it even has a pair of built-in two watt speakers which are great for video conferencing okay so right now the audio and video that you're seeing right now is coming from the anchor work b600 now i do have the studio lights on right now but i'm gonna go ahead and turn those off and i'm gonna turn on the led light so you can see the difference that the light makes and i'm gonna go ahead and turn the light up so you can see it actually fills my face here. So if you can see the difference, I think this adds a nice effect to it. So the B600 retails for 220 bucks, but if you don't need all the extra features and you're looking for a less expensive alternative, the C200 is another great camera with 2K resolution and a retail price of 70 bucks. So if you're interested in checking out either of these cameras, be sure to use the links in the video description to grab yours today. I wanna thank Anchor Work for sponsoring today's video and let's jump back into it. So if you haven't seen any modern day projectors, you might be surprised at how much has changed over the past few years. We have several 4K and even 8K projectors, super bright laser projectors, ultra short throw projectors that sit right in front of the wall, and even some small portable ones that you can fit in your pocket. With all these advancements, I'd say the projectors have become significantly more popular over the past 10 years or so, as they've gotten brighter and sharper, but there are still a few things to consider before you take the plunge. Now again, I'm a huge fan of projectors and I currently use one in both my living room and my home theater so this video isn't bashing them but I wanted to be completely subjective and discuss some of the most common downsides to buying a projector. All right, so starting off this list with the most popular issue, which is brightness. As most people know, a projector's biggest enemy is a really bright room. Maybe you have a ton of lights in the room or a bunch of windows, but either way, a ton of ambient light is gonna make pretty much any projector look bad. Now, this is kind of a complex issue since some projectors are really bright and we have some screens that are built specifically to block ambient light, but even with those things, it's still a major problem. Now, to be fair, I do use a bright ultra short throw laser projector in my living room with an ambient light rejecting screen and I love it, but if I open all the curtains in the middle of the day, it can be challenging trying to watch certain content. This means no matter how bright your projector is, you'll probably at least need some curtains if you plan on using it in a living room. Next up on our list is space. So if you've ever seen a traditional projector, it was probably several feet away from the screen. The distance that a projector needs to be away from the screen to produce a certain size image is known as throw, and it varies depending on the projector. But the biggest deciding factor that determines how far your projector needs to be from your screen is the size of your screen. So if you want something insane like a 160 inch screen, depending on the projector, you might need to sit the projector up to 20 feet away from the screen. And on top of that, you need really high ceilings considering the screen could be almost seven feet tall. So to deal with this issue, projector manufacturers have developed projectors that are known as short throw projectors. Short throw projectors have a shorter throw so they don't have to sit as far away from the screen to produce a big image. So for that huge 160 inch screen, you might only need 11 feet instead of 20 feet. Another alternative which have become really popular lately are ultra short throw projectors. These projectors require even less space and they sit only inches away from the screen so they can be placed on a TV stand right in front of the wall. Considering they don't require professional installation and the fact that they're so bright, they're more ideal for people who can afford them, but they also still have a couple of downsides. The first issue is price. Ultra short throw projectors usually start somewhere around 2000 bucks and that doesn't include a screen. And since they work best with ambient light rejecting screens, you can add another $500 or so depending on the size screen you want. Another downside is limited screen sizes. Most ultra 
your short throw projectors max out somewhere between 120 and 130 inches with a few of them capable of 150 inches. But if you do go with a 150 inch screen, most ultra short throws are gonna have to sit two feet or more away from the screen. Now this is still pretty close, but it's far enough that you're probably gonna have to pull your TV stand pretty far away from the wall to accommodate it, which can be a problem if you're in a small room. All right, so moving on to our third point, which is cost. Now this one can be kind of tricky since there are some really cheap projectors out there, but once you start to factor in everything you need, it can become a slippery slope. So a few months ago, I did a video on a few inexpensive projectors I found on Amazon. And while I found that they weren't something I recommend for a high quality home theater experience, they weren't too bad for someone who's just getting started with projectors. But the biggest thing I found that people don't consider when buying a projector is that the projector needs other supporting accessories in order for you to get the best experience. So let's say you bought a $200 projector. Well, you're gonna need a projector mount if you wanna mount it on a ceiling. You're also gonna need a screen and some sort of sound system. Now, technically you can just sit the projector on a coffee table and point it at a white wall instead of buying a screen, but an inexpensive screen looks much better than a painted wall. And even though most projectors have a built-in speaker, they don't usually work that well for watching movies even compared to a cheap TV, so I'd recommend at least a budget soundbar. So now that $200 has turned into $500 or more, and again, that's still a really low budget setup. In other words, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade from this pretty quickly if you start taking it seriously. So compared to $350 for a 65 inch 4K TV, you can see how our projector can get pretty costly compared to a TV. The only time a projector costs less than a TV is when you compare size. So most projectors can easily produce a 100 inch screen, while a 100 inch TV costs around $10,000. All right, so moving on to the next thing I wanna talk about, which is gaming. Now, in recent years, this has become less of an issue since we now have gaming projectors, but historically, gaming on a projector has fallen short to TVs and monitors because of high input lag. So if you're not familiar with it, input lag is the amount of time it takes for an action to occur on the screen when you press a button on your controller. This can range from something really low, like less than one millisecond, to insanely slow, like 200 milliseconds or more. High input lag can make your gaming experience experience absolutely horrible, especially if you're playing fast paced games. This is why I always mention input lag in all of my projector reviews. If you plan on gaming at all, it's best to look for a projector with an input lag of at least 50 milliseconds and even less if you're an avid gamer. Now newer gaming projectors don't really suffer from this as they often have input lag as low as eight milliseconds with 4K content and even less with higher refresh rates. The downside is that these projectors usually lack a bit in color accuracy to get the higher brightness brightness and the low input lag, so they're not usually as good for movies as other home theater projectors with higher input lag. So overall, when it comes to gaming, it's not really a major issue, but it is something to look out for so you don't pick out the wrong projector. And the last thing I wanna talk about is projector lifespan. Now, before I get into the lifespan of a projector, you should know that the average TV has a lifespan of up to 60,000 hours or more. That's around 20 years if you were to use it for 10 hours a day. Well, unlike TVs, most projectors use a lamp that has a limited lifespan. This lifespan usually averages out to about 4,000 hours. So if you were to use your projector for that same 10 hours a day, you might get just over a year before you'd have to replace the lamp. Now, most projector lamps cost around 100 40 bucks or so and they're not terribly difficult to replace but after a few replacements the image quality starts to deteriorate so the alternative would be either laser or led projectors which have a much longer lifespan the light source and laser and led projectors usually last up to 25,000 hours this works out to around six or seven years if you use it for that same 10 hours a day the only issue is that the laser or led light sources are often not serviceable so you'd either have to ship the projector to the manufacturer figure out how to get your hands on a replacement light source and do it yourself or throw the projector away. Now to be fair, 10 hours a day is a lot of TV watching. So if you cut that down to five hours, it can double the lifespan, but either way you have to consider that most TVs last much longer. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm a huge fan of projectors and I use one in my home theater as well as my living room and I love both of them. The fact that 100 inch or larger TVs are so expensive makes a projector a better choice if you're looking for a huge screen. Not to mention you can pretty much go as big as you want. Now, I know some people are gonna come in here and say you can just buy an 85 inch TV for 1500 bucks, but going from 85 to 100 makes a huge difference, not to mention 120 inches or larger. In other words, even though they're not perfect, projectors are still king when it comes to huge screens if you're looking for the best bang for your buck. 
But that's gonna pretty much do it for today's video, guys. If you found it helpful, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.